In this episode, we're going to see something a bit different. Not just plain digital logic, but smart analog. And you'll see how these kind of devices make it easy to connect the digital computer world to the real analog world. Boolean algebra and traditional logic gates are perfectly happy inside the digital world, where everything is neat and clean. It's high or low, zero or one, voltage or no voltage. But the real world is nothing like this. The sun doesn't suddenly flash on in the morning then flash off at night. It's a gradual transition from dark to bright and then from bright back to dark. There are so many shades of light and dark throughout the day, which we call analog. So how do we correlate activities inside the digital binary zero and one computer world with the sort of on, sort of off of the outside world? We need to come up with some way to connect the digital world to the analog world. Smart Analog is the name for these types of products. They are half analog and half digital, and that gives them the best of both worlds. Examples are load switches, analog switches, supervisory reset circuits, translators, and comparators. In this episode, we're going to focus on this last type, the comparator. The function of a comparator is right there in the name. It compares two voltages together and tells you which one is higher. This is the symbol for a comparator. Now don't confuse it with the symbol for a digital inverter. An inverter has only one input while a comparator has two on it. Actually, the comparator is one of the oldest integrated circuits, right back there with the first digital logic gates. But by applying modern semiconductor fabrication to these devices, they can now go places where they could never go before. The first comparators were rather power hungry devices. The venerable LM393 could consume as much as a few milliamps just sitting there monitoring the two inputs. But the newest generation of comparators, like this NCX2202 family, consumes only about one one thousandth as much. That's a couple of microamps. Now with that low of a current, you can do some really interesting applications. One of the most common applications for comparators is to determine the voltage in a battery in your mobile phone, in your laptop, your tablet, or your electric vehicle. And since the battery pack in each of these is actually made up of a number of individual cells, it would be even better if you could measure the voltage not of just the entire pack, but of each individual cell inside of it. Now in the past, the current consumed by using so many comparators, one per cell, could be as much or more than the device that you're trying to power in the first place, which means if you left the gadget on for a while, it would simply self-discharge itself because of the comparators. But with ultra-low power comparators, this becomes an almost insignificant portion of the power system draw. Now here's a typical circuit for using a comparator to see if the voltage in a battery has dropped below some set point. In fact, this circuit is so simple, instead of talking about it, why don't we go build it? To build this circuit, we need the following. A proto board, the NCX2202 on an adapter board, two trim potentiometers, an LED, a current limiting resistor for the LED, and a couple batteries or a lab power supply. Here's what we're going to build. <clears throat> to make it useful, let's set it up so that we can measure the 12 volts that you might find in your car electrical system. Now the NCX2202 only operates up to about 5 volts, so the first thing we need to do is give it a nice 5 volt power supply. There's a lot of ways to do this, but a simple way is to use an old reliable 7805 regulator. Put in any voltage from 7 to about 18 volts and it always gives you 5 volts back. There's other ways of course of doing this. The other thing we need this voltage regulator for is to provide a stable voltage reference. Without it, as our car battery voltage drops, so would our reference voltage and we would never be able to measure with it. So by making the reference voltage independent from the main supply, we can count on it to be a stable voltage to compare it against. The maximum voltage that we can put into the NCX2202 is also only 5 volts. 
So to make it useful to measure something like the 12.6 volts found in our car electrical system, we need to divide that car voltage down to a tolerable level. We can do this using R1, which is a 100K potentiometer. Once we hook it up, we can then adjust it so its output into the comparator is divided by three. In other words, so that a maximum voltage from the car at 12.6 volts will be seen as a safe 4.2 volts into the comparator. Then R2 is used to set whatever threshold voltage we like. When the car voltage drops below this point, the LED will light up. It's a simple way of determining if your car battery is going dead. And here it is, the complete circuit. You can see that the voltage regulator and the reference in the upper left and the two potentiometers are on the right, so that the LED is already lit up. What's even more fun though is to take several of these and set them at different voltage levels like this example. This is the flux capacitor fuel gauge which was used on the Logic Mobile Generation 2. A separate potentiometer on each of the LEDs lets you set them for any values you want. Now you can put the voltages close together or far apart or even out of order if you like. It lets you create your own custom voltmeter. And that's just one of the applications for low current comparators follows are a couple other uses. Here's a circuit that has two comparators in it. This is used to set the upper and lower temperature limits on a rechargeable battery. One comparator sets the minimum temperature where you can safely charge the battery. The other, with the temperature sensor right on the battery itself, lets you know if the battery is getting dangerously hot and if you should stop charging it. This is a really clever application that's only possible if you have a very low current comparator. Have you ever wondered how your mobile phone knows what type of accessories just got plugged into that three and a half millimeter audio jack? It might be some earbuds, or a microphone, or a combination headset, or even a credit card reader. In the past, the sensing was often done with a fancy mechanical switch that contacted the various rings on the plug to determine the type. However, each of these accessories has a unique impedance resistance. If you pass a very small current through them, a comparator can sense what was just plugged in. A simple connector, no mechanical switches to get dirty, just a great reliable design. And yet another common application for comparators. Whenever a laptop or mobile phone or pretty much any electronic device resets, the micro needs to wait until the voltage supply is stable then have its reset pin held for a certain amount of time. This comparator circuit watches the power that goes into the microprocessor. When the power is first turned on, the comparator holds the micro in a safe reset mode until the proper voltage reference is met. Then it waits the appropriate amount of time for it to stabilize before releasing the reset line on the micro and letting it start. Again, simple and reliable way of making sure that your microprocessor works the way you intended it to. So there you have it, the comparator. It's one of the simplest devices in the smart analog family, but it gives you some tremendous design flexibility when trying to connect together the analog and the digital world. <laughs>